Welcome to Module 9. Deploying and Operating AWS Cloud. In this module, we will cover the following subject. Different ways to provision and operate in the AWS Cloud through AWS Management Console, Command Line Interface or CLI, AWS Software Development Kit or SDK, and Infrastructure as Code or IAC through AWS Cloud Formation. Cloud Computing Deployment Models from Cloud, On-Premises and Hybrid. Connectivity options to AWS such as Public Internet, VPN Gateway, NAT Gateway and AWS Direct Connect. Let's get started. There are different ways of interacting with AWS services, which are vital for AWS Cloud Resource Provisioning, Configuration and Management. The API or Application Programming Interface serves as the foundation to interact with AWS services. It allows us to invoke AWS APIs for resource provisioning, configuration, and management. AWS Management Console is a user-friendly interface designed for those who prefer a visual approach to managing AWS resources. With its point-and-click style, it's perfect for non-technical users and beginners. Explore AWS services effortlessly, create test environments, monitor your resources, and collaborate with non-technical teams for a better understanding of both AWS services and billing. While it's great for one-time operations, keep in mind that it's not as scalable or repeatable as some other options. AWS Command Line Interface, or CLI is a powerful tool offers a command-based approach, steering clear of the manual point-and-click style of the management console. It's all about making actions repeatable, reducing the risk of human errors, and enabling automation for scheduled or triggered tasks using scripts. If you're looking for a solution tailored for repeatable processes and a more efficient workflow, the AWS CLI is your go-to option. For developers out there, AWS provides software development kits or SDK supporting various programming languages such as C++, Python, Java, .NET, and more. These kits empower developers to interact with AWS resources seamlessly, without delving into low-level APIs or dealing with the manual resource creation process. This method is ideal for creating AWS programs and is particularly suitable for scenarios requiring repeatable processes. Lastly, Infrastructure as Code or IAC is a powerful service allows you to treat your infrastructure as code, building AWS environments by writing code in YAML or JSON templates using AWS Cloud. Formation the fully automated process minimizes the potential for human error and enhances efficiency. AWS Cloud Formation detects errors and, in case of issues, automatically rolls back changes to maintain the integrity of your stack. If you're aiming for a fully automated, error resistant infrastructure deployment, AWS Cloud Formation is the tool for you. To demonstrate the functionality of the AWS Management Console, I will guide you through the process of launching an Amazon EC2 Windows instance covered by the AWS free tier. Let's get started. Open the Amazon EC2 console. In the Launch Instance section, choose Launch Instance. Provide a name for the instance. For the AMI, Amazon Machine Image, select Windows and choose a free tier eligible AMI. For the instance type, select a t2.micro instance labeled as free tier eligible. For key pair login, choose an existing key pair or create a new one. For this demonstration, let's create a new key pair. To create a new one, click create new key pair. Use any name for your key pair. Choose ppk as the private key file format. And click create key pair. The key pair will be downloaded to your Windows machine. For network settings, configure a security group to allow only trusted traffic. For now, let's permit access only from our IP address. For storage configuration, choose up to 30 GB of storage with either general purpose SSD, GP2 or magnetic standard. Note that only 30 GB of Amazon Elastic Block storage per account are covered under the free tier. Consider the storage allocated to other instances on your account when adding storage to this instance. For advanced details, ensure that request spot instances is not selected. 
and set tenancy to shared, run a shared hardware instance. All other settings do not impact whether the instance's usage is covered by the free tier. In the summary, review your configuration. If it matches your specifications, choose Launch Instance. You will see a notification that AWS has successfully initiated the launch of your instance. To view your newly created instance, click on View All Instances. Congratulations! You have successfully launched an Amazon EC2 Windows instance covered under the AWS free tier. Instead of the AWS Management Console, we can launch an AWS EC2 instance using CLI, the AWS command line interface. Simply enter the appropriate AWS CLI command, as illustrated here. Upon successful execution, AWS CLI will provide details about the newly created EC2 instance. Key points to consider. Ensure AWS CLI is installed on your laptop or PC. AWS CLI has versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. After installation, configure AWS CLI before use. Another option for accessing and managing AWS services is SDKs, the Software Development Kits. SDKs make it easier for you to use AWS services through an API designed for your programming language or platform. SDKs enable you to use AWS services with your existing applications or create entirely new applications that will run on the AWS. In our demonstration, we'll specifically delve into using a Python script to dynamically launch an EC2 instance, showcasing the potential of AWS SDKs in action. We've developed a straightforward Python script named EC2 underscore Python. All that's required is to run the script. The Python script we've crafted for creating and launching an EC2 instance is as follows. Here are a couple of important notes. Make sure you have the latest version of Python installed on your Windows system. You can easily download it from the official Python website. Once Python is successfully installed, the next step is to incorporate Boto3, the Python SDK for AWS. Boto3 serves as the bridge between your Python scripts and AWS services, allowing for the direct manipulation of AWS resources, enabling actions like creation, updating, and deletion from within Python scripts. AWS CloudFormation is a powerful service that accelerates cloud provisioning by enabling you to treat your infrastructure as code. With CloudFormation, you can model, provision, and manage a collection of AWS and third-party resources seamlessly. Let's delve into the key steps to harness the full potential of cloud formation. Start by crafting your infrastructure using a cloud formation template. You can either create your own template or leverage a sample template provided by AWS. These templates are written in YAML or JSON format, offering flexibility and readability for your infrastructure definition. Here's a glimpse of how simple it is to create an EC2 instance using cloud formation. After coding your template, you can upload it from your local files or store it in an S3 bucket. This step ensures that your infrastructure definition is securely stored and ready for deployment. Utilize AWS CloudFormation through the browser console, command line tools, or API to deploy your stack based on the template code. This flexibility allows you to choose the method that best fits your workflow and preferences. Once initiated, CloudFormation takes charge. It provisions and configures the stacks and resources specified in your template. This automated process ensures a consistent and reliable deployment, reducing the risk of errors and enhancing the efficiency of your cloud provisioning. In the realm of cloud computing, various deployment models offer unique solutions to cater to diverse business needs. Let's explore the three primary deployment models, cloud, on-premises, and hybrid. Enter the world of cloud-based applications, where the entirety of the application is housed and operates in the cloud. 
whether newly created or migrated from existing infrastructure, these applications leverage the benefits of cloud computing. Cloud-based applications can be constructed using low-level infrastructure components or can opt for higher-level services, abstracting away the complexities of managing, architecting, and scaling core infrastructure. The cloud provides a dynamic and scalable environment, ideal for modern applications. On the other end of the spectrum is the on-premises deployment model. Here, resources are deployed locally, often referred to as the private cloud when virtualization and resource management tools are utilized. While this model may not fully harness the advantages of cloud computing, it remains valuable for its provision of dedicated resources. On-premises deployment is reminiscent of legacy IT infrastructure but integrates application management and virtualization technologies to enhance resource utilization. Now, envision a hybrid deployment, a strategic amalgamation of cloud-based resources and existing resources residing outside the cloud. Hybrid deployment commonly involves connecting cloud resources with on-premises infrastructure, facilitating the extension and expansion of an organization's infrastructure into the cloud. This approach enables seamless collaboration between internal systems and cloud resources, offering a balanced and adaptable solution for organizations navigating the transition to the cloud. As we're diving into the world of AWS connectivity options and related terminology. Before we get into the nitty gritty of options like public internet, AWS VPN, NAT gateway, and AWS Direct Connect, let's first familiarize ourselves with some fundamental concepts. Virtual Private Cloud or VPC is your private network in AWS. A VPC creates a private network within AWS. You get to define your private IP address range for your AWS resources. Inside your VPC, you can place resources such as EC2 instances, ELBs, and databases. Subnets are like chunks of IP addresses within your VPC. They group resources together and allow you to control whether resources are publicly or privately accessible. You can manage inbound and outbound traffic for various scenarios. Resources placed in a public subnet are directly accessible from the public internet. This is useful for web servers or other resources that need to be publicly available. In contrast, a private subnet restricts direct access from the public internet. It provides a more secure environment for your resources, making it ideal for databases or back-end services that don't need direct public access. Let's delve deeper into the architecture of your virtual private cloud. As you can see from the sample diagram, your VPC is divided into subnets, one public subnet and two private subnets. Now, what if you want the public internet to access your public website running on EC2 instance and database located in that public subnet? The answer is the Internet Gateway, often abbreviated as IGW. So, what exactly is an Internet Gateway? Well, think of it as the gateway to the world for your virtual private cloud. It's like the doorway that enables traffic to flow into and out of your public subnet in your VPC from the vast realm of the public internet. At its core, a NAT gateway is a crucial component in networking, enabling instances within private subnets to access the internet. This gateway acts as an intermediary, facilitating communication between private instances and the vast expanse of the internet. One key feature of NAT Gateway is its role in managing outbound connections. Instances in private subnets utilize the NAT Gateway to reach external resources on the Internet. This allows them to retrieve updates, download packages, or communicate with external services without directly exposing their private IP addresses. While NAT Gateway facilitates outbound connections, it's important to note that instances in private subnets, connected to the Internet through the NAT Gateway, cannot receive unsolicited inbound connections. This adds a layer of security by preventing direct access to these instances from the Internet. Now, let's discuss connecting your on-premises data center with your AWS virtual private cloud. Imagine you want your on-premise data center to securely communicate with the private subnet within your VPC. AWS provides a solution for this, it's called the Virtual Private Network Gateway or VPN Gateway. The VPN Gateway acts as the bridge between your on-premises data center and the private subnet in your AWS VPC. 
It establishes a secure and encrypted connection, ensuring the confidentiality and integrity of your data as it travels between the two environments. It's important to note that the VPN shares bandwidth with the regular internet. Another key point to remember is that the virtual private gateway is designed for private traffic only. It doesn't handle public internet traffic. When it comes to specific requirements like low latency, stringent security, and avoiding shared bandwidth issues to meet regulatory and compliance standards, AWS provides a dedicated and direct connection between your on-premises data center and your AWS virtual private CLU. This solution is aptly named AWS Direct Connect. AWS Direct Connect is the ideal choice when you need to ensure minimal latency in your data transfer and uphold the highest level of security. This is especially important when you have strict compliance and regulatory requirements to meet. Unlike shared bandwidth scenarios, AWS Direct Connect provides a dedicated, private network link that connects your on-premises data center directly to your AWS VPC. This ensures that your data doesn't mix with the regular internet traffic, guaranteeing secure and reliable communication. As we just discussed, let's quickly summarize the connectivity options to AWS. Internet Gateway enables public traffic access to your VPC resources. It serves as the crucial link connecting your VPC to the internet. VPN Gateway establishes encrypted connections from on-premises to VPC via the public internet. It facilitates the creation of a secure VPN connection with approved networks. NAT Gateway empowers private subnet instances to initiate outbound traffic. It supports multiple instances, auto-scales for increased traffic, ensuring secure connectivity. Direct Connect establishes a private, dedicated fiber connection to your data center. It addresses latency and bandwidth concerns, meeting high regulatory and compliance needs. Congratulations! You have completed Module 9. Deploying and Operating AWS Cloud.